Good morning, friends in Christ. We are glad that you are joining us on this Friday morning as we have this opportunity to get into the Word of the Lord as we're going through the Gospel of Mark. And as we're going through the Gospel of Mark, we see that Jesus continues to be on the move, that Mark's Gospel moves really, really fast. And so we're going to find ourselves today in Mark chapter 3. So go ahead and open up your Bibles to Mark chapter 3. When you get there, you can hit the share button as we continue to invite others to join us with this time that we have in community of being in the Word of God together, growing together, learning together, challenging each other, and holding each other accountable of how we apply the Word of God to our everyday life as we continue to follow Jesus on our spiritual journey. Mark chapter 3, we're going to be looking at verses 7 through 12 today, and it's important that we remember where things left off yesterday. And so anytime you're looking at a portion of Scripture, we want Scripture to interpret Scripture, and we want to look at the context. And so what happens before and after sometimes is vitally important. And so we left off yesterday with Mark chapter 3, verse 6, where it says, The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. And so Jesus is being attacked by his opponents. And his opponents, they can't agree on theology. They can't agree on how they practice their faith. And they have many differences. But the one thing that they are starting to agree on is that they have flagged Jesus as a bad guy. And now they are holding meetings together to plan and to plot to take Jesus out. And so this is a meeting that is all about taking down Jesus. And so how does Jesus respond? And the question for us this morning too then is, how do we respond? Especially when it comes to our enemies. How do we respond when it comes to conflict? And Jesus challenges us. He challenges us to say, Pray for those who persecute you, that you've heard it to hate your enemies. I say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And so we are challenged of how do we handle conflict. And what Jesus teaches us here is that as this conflict is brewing and his opponents are looking at him with red eyes to where the anger is so great that you can't even really talk to them or have a discussion, sometimes You have to leave the situation to allow things to simmer down. And that's what we're going to see Jesus do in verse 7. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea and from beyond the Jordan and from around Tyre and Sidon. When the great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him. And so Jesus' popularity continues to grow. And all of these locations are mentioned because if we were looking a map here of this Holy Land area, we would see that people are coming from all over, traveling hundreds of miles from the north, from the south, from the east to the west. They're coming from all over and from some far, far off distances. And so Sidon is 60 miles northwest of Galilee, for instance, Jerusalem, 100 miles north. And so from all directions, hundreds of miles, people are traveling to hear and to see for themselves this Jesus, this Jesus that preaches with authority, that has this incredible teaching, and not only teaching and preaching, but he is healing people, and he is casting out demons And anybody with any illnesses, that's where you're going to go. And you know, if you're hurting or if you're in pain or something's not not, not right with you physically or spiritually, you will travel hundreds of miles to go and to get an answer and to try to get a solution, to try to get healing and how desperate you can become when you're hurting. And that's where people are at. They are desperate and they hear about this miracle worker and they want to go see it for themselves, but also to be healed. And so the crowd that is following Jesus is so big that Jesus is withdrawing from his opponents who are trying to kill him, but he's also withdrawing because the crowds are so big and the popularity is increasing. And so that's where we're at as we look at verse 9. 
And so he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him. And so he tells his disciples, get a boat ready just in case we have to escape. Just in case the crowd gets so big that they're all around me and that we can't control the crowd anymore and they start to crush me, we have to have an escape route ready to go. And so the crowds are bigger than what they've ever anticipated and what they have ever planned for. And so Jesus says, just in case, let's have a boat ready. Just in case they try to crush me because they're so great and crowd gets out of control that I can hop in this boat and we can continue to live life and do ministry. And so Jesus has this rescue boat ready to go. And as he has this rescue boat ready to go, we hear why in verse 10. For he healed many so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. Jesus, even though people have diseases, even though they have all of these different ailments, and sometimes even spiritual, the demonic possession, Jesus is not afraid to touch them, to show them compassion, to pray for them, to love on them, and to bring them healing. It's the reason why he came, to seek and to save and to heal and to bring the kingdom of God to this broken, hurting world. And so as he is doing this, the crowds are getting bigger and bigger. And as they're getting bigger, they're pressing around him to touch him. And we know how important the power of touch is, the power of touch in our own life. That power of touch happened for us. You know, when we're a little baby and mom and dad are holding us and that power of that touch. When God touches us through the waters of holy baptism and that he claims us as his own and we're adopted into his family with the power of his touch, our sins are forgiven and that we are healed and that the Holy Spirit came to live in our heart and soul and God promised us eternal salvation, that power of touch. That power of touch week in and week out in worship when we come up to the altar and God touches us personally with his own body and blood for the forgiveness of sins and for the strengthening of faith that this is given and shed for you. Personal touch is so important. And one of the five love languages, right, is physical touch. And when you're hurting and you haven't had anybody touch you and you're not able to touch anybody else because you're sick, that power of touch it's so vitally important, and that's what Jesus is providing the people here, and it's having this huge effect, and that's why this crowd is getting bigger and bigger and coming from all areas. Verse 11, And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. Jesus' opponents, they're trying to plot and kill him. They don't understand that he's the Son of God. But the evil one, the one that Jesus is battling in spiritual warfare of coming to this sinful world and he is healing people, even the unclean demonic spirits who oppose Jesus can't help but cry out on who he truly, truly is. And they say, you are the son of God. Even the unclean spirits are testifying on who Jesus is. And then we get to verse 12. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. So he tells those evil, unclean spirits, be quiet. Don't be telling everybody that I am the son of God. That there is a mission, a plan, and a purpose here. And everything's going to happen in God's timing. And God is leading this plan of salvation and this journey to the cross. Not you. And so don't disrupt what God is doing in his plans. Don't try to speed this up, right? Because Jesus knows that he is following the Father's will and plan as he's making his way to the cross and that following his Father and submitting to him, everything happens in the right time. But it's his Father who leads, not these unclean spirits. And so what we recognize uh, today is that Jesus popularity was gaining out of control but popularity for a reason and the reason was is because of his healing and his compassion and healing people of their infirmities and diseases 
and the word is spreading. And so today, as we go out to be the hands and feet of Jesus, we realize that God has healed us for a reason, to go out and to be healers and to point to the one who can heal us physically, spiritually, emotionally, and socially. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we know the power of his touch because he has touched our hearts, our souls, and our lives and brought us this healing. We go out to take the touch of Jesus to a world that is in desperate need of it. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful of you sending us your one and only Son who came to redeem the world, who came to heal the world, and who touched us in a personal way to give us that redemption and that healing, and that we have been brought into your family, that we are children of God. Lord, continue to bless your children, bless your church, as you continue to heal us, to go out and to heal others with the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're thankful for our time together today in your word, and may this word continue to shape our hearts, our souls, and our minds, and bring us the healing that we desperately need and seek, that we only find in you, Jesus, our Savior. And all God's people said, Amen. Tomorrow morning, from 9 to noon, we'll have our new member class. And then on Sunday, worship, 8, 9, 10, 30, and 6, 30, Sunday night. And so we look forward to seeing you in church. And for those who can't join us in person, we look forward to you joining us online to worship with us at the 9 o'clock hour, whether it's the Mount Olive YouTube channel or our Facebook page, as we continue to grow in our relationship with Jesus have a blessed weekend in the most powerful name, in the name of Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And all God's people said, Amen. Have a blessed day.